got Termux installed, so we're ready to go. So next what we want to do is install Andronix, which is actually going to give us our Linux environment, or it's going to give us the links so that we can install it. So let's go ahead and go to Andronix. If you don't have it installed, we can just go to the Google Play Store and just go ahead. So this, after you install Termux from Ifdroid, everything else you can get from uh, the Google Play Store. So we're just going to search Andronix, and there we go. All right, and uh, looks like it's been disabled by my battery management situation on my tablet. That's fine. So we're just going to install this Andronix Linux on Android, and we're going to open that up. That is really bright. And oh yeah, so here's where we get this really nice warning. I'm going to see if I can make this full screen, which I cannot. Uh, okay, so this is really important. Termix and F-Droid Store. Termix has depreciated its version on the Google Play Store to continue using Andronix and Termux. Please read the following article. So basically, that's just going to tell you that there's some limitations going on with the Google Play Store and you want to install it from F-Droid. But thankfully, we did that. So what we're going to do is install Andronix. These are the various distros or distributions of Linux that we have to choose from. We have Ubuntu, we have Kali, we have Debian, we have Arc. We have Manjaro, I don't actually know what that one is. We have as them but this is actually stuff I kind of want to showcase because sometimes I have issues and I wonder about how people get around them so sometimes when I install Andronix modded OS for Ubuntu it does not work for instance in this case it didn't work I originally thought it was because I did some rooted stuff in the background but I'm no longer convinced that's the case so what I did is I went to Andronix and in order to uninstall a distribution after you install it you're going to do uninstall which will give you a link then you copy that into termux you run that and then what it'll actually do is delete all the folders that were there so there used to be um a file system folder there used to be the sh to actually run the distribution all of that's been removed because i just ran this uninstall script so what we're going to do instead is use the andronix debian os I've had the most success with Debian uh, unmodded and modded, so we'll just try it with that one. And I actually kind of like the look of the Debian one. Uh, let's go ahead and proceed and install. Alright, we've got the command, let's open Termux. Let's go ahead and clear all of this. We're going to do long click, paste, and go from there. This is actually important too. Uh, when you install a new version, it will delete any old versions. Now, you'll see that screen when you try to install different versions of the modded OS. If you install the Ubuntu modded OS side by side with the Debian modded OS, it'll be fine. But if you install a new version of the Debian modded OS on top of an old version, it'll delete the old version. All right, and we're just gonna do this. So it's, the directory storage is a link. It's like a special folder that allows you to access the internal storage of your files. You don't wanna put stuff in that particular directory. You wanna go straight to the storage directories. It has to clear that every time it installs. But once again, not an issue. We're just gonna do type Y and we're gonna go. So then it's going to begin the installation of the Debian space modded OS. Alright, so this is the screen you'll see once it finishes installing, and once again we're going to get some folders created. So we have the Binds folder, I'm not exactly sure what that's for, the Android Deb uh, FS folder which stands for file system, that's a very important directory. Uh, we have the repo.sh, not sure what that does, and then we have the start Android Deb.sh. 
that's another import file that we're going to be using right now in order to start the distribution. So let's go ahead and do dot slash to run the program. And we're going to do start uh, dash andro dev dot sh. Make sure you type in the full file. I often forget the sh part because of some other setup I did on another system, but make sure you type that up at this stage. So let's try and start it. And we're still getting single errors. Alright, so if for some reason you can't get the modded OSs to install, like in my case, for some strange reason, I could have tried to other two, but I don't feel like doing that at this current moment, and plus, installing everything custom may actually be more important to showcase. Uh, I like Debian because it's stable, so we'll just do that. Um, we're gonna skip the modded OS, and we're going to go to install. And I like the desktop environment, the X-Face desktop environment. I think one of these actually is, yeah, this this one is really slim, the LXDE. So like if you have storage constraints, you might want to try that one. But we're going to go with X-Face. And we're going to delete copy, we're going to open Trunks, we're going to clear the previous fallout, and we're going to try this again. And we're going to do a long click. You cannot do Control-V with the keyboard uh, in Termux either. So. Yeah, sometimes that happens too. Uh, I think it'll add a character when you try to do uh, certain commands instead of actually doing a command, so that's what messed that up. That's another good thing to show. So we're going to do enter. So just to clarify, we're not installing a modded OS now. We're currently installing just a normal Debian distribution. So it's not going to have all of the extra knickknacks, but we honestly don't need them. So this is actually an important setup process for the normal version, so this may be good. So let's go ahead and select English US if you're in the United States, and I think you can type in other numbers to get the rest of them. And all those packages are just uh, loaded right there were all the packages for the desktop environment. So I think when it installs it uh, with the modded OS, it installs it as kind of like a, an image. We do it this way, all the packages have to be installed separately. This is actually an important step when you install it the normal way and you don't use the modded OS. You have to set up the DNC situation, which is super easy. So what you're going to do is you're just going to set a password of your choice. And you're going to repeat that password. And it says would you like to enter a few-only password. I don't usually enter one for this. I don't use that feature. I just do N for no. Alright, and then start the DNC server at port 1. It's got a few more configurations to run. Alright, and it looks like we're in. So, now that everything is installed, it looks like we've got a successful run. Let's go ahead and add a VNC entry into our VNC app of choice. So I prefer VVNC. It's just an excellent app. One thing I will note is that when using this app, you need to make sure you use 
the Ultra DMC setting. So as might be see. So make sure you choose Ultra DMC. I'm not sure why, but that's the only way it seems to work for some reason. So go ahead and give it a title. We'll call this uh, Debian Work Space. And we can always ins try installing the modded OSs alongside this in the future, but it's always good to get at least a working baseline. And even getting the basic Debian is enough. Like you can do a lot. You, the modded OS is just a bunch of, it's the easy quick start. This is just fine. So the DNC server is going to be localhost, which we can actually type in. And then it's going to be on port one. And then you'll just need to make sure you type in the password that you set. And this should be all we need. So we're just going to save this. And this should give us a Linux workspace. And we're in. And we're just going to use the default config. All right. Now, before we start having fun with the actual Linux distribution, uh, there's some things about BBNC, what I like to do. So if you are at a desk like I am, or at a table, and you have a mouse and keyboard connected, I recommend setting the scaling to fit to screen. It'll just make uh, the mouse easier, because when I move the mouse around, you'll see this little black cursor underneath the white cursor. That's actually the Linux distributions cursor, and you want it to align up to make it easier to select things inside the environment. But what we're going to do is we're going to do some basic setup in the next part to make things just a little bit easier to work around when you're not rooted.